Carmel, California. This is June 6, 1977. Dalek is Thursday number 272. The assassinations of John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy are in the news again this week. The headlines of the San Jose Mercury in our local paper have to do with members of the Board of Supervisors of Los Angeles interviewing Sirhan Sirhan in Soledad Prison here in California this past uh, Thursday. And I'll speak at length about that uh, interview that they have. And also the New York Times has a headline this morning, a large article, front page two columns and further inside. And it was in the San Francisco Chronicle titled, The Assassination Probe is Stymied, the Sources Reveal. And it goes on to say that the House Select Committee on Assassinations, which is in Washington, D.C., it was formed this year and given $2 million to investigate the murders of John Kennedy and Reverend Martin Luther King. The suggestion is that they have come up with no new information for eight months on the assassination of John Kennedy or Martin Luther King that is relevant and that they discovered much of the so-called new information is in error. I want to uh, talk about these two subjects. If I don't have time to go into the John Kennedy story this week, I'll be doing it for sure next week. This is what I predicted would happen in Washington, D.C., that the, there would be efforts to sabotage that committee from both within and without. And, of course, I put a lot of the blame upon a gentleman named Mark Lane, and his name comes up in the article over and over again about his new book out with Dick Gregory and the discrepancies of some material in the book and what the committee is doing in Washington. And I know the way they were operating, that it was doomed to fail. It's making the same mistakes as the notorious Warren Commission. In fact, I wrote a 15-page paper, had mimeographed copies made out called a position paper, that I sent to all the researchers that I respect around the country and to some that I don't respect, members of the commission back there investigating it now, the House Committee. And I listed all the reasons why um, a good investigation was needed and what you need to have a good investigation. And if you go down the list, everything that I suggested is not being done, but is being done in reverse. And of course, the New York Times is eating it up. They love this discrepancy between the researchers and to try to make the American people think there isn't any new evidence on the assassinations to investigate. The New York Times, of course, published the Warren Report for the Warren Commission. They put out one of the volumes with an introduction of Harrison Salisbury, which is outrageously insulting to people who really want to find truth in this country. But I do want to talk about the interview with Sirhan and the evidence of the conspiracy in that case with you for most of the program today, and we'll get to that. Before I do, there is one local matter that I do want to continue here that doesn't affect the Sacramento listeners or the people in the East but it has to do with the hearing here in uh, Monterey, California, in Salinas, at the Board of Supervisors last week on that water hearing last Tuesday. The big problem, of course, in our area is whether people are going to be able to dig for water on their own property and use their wells, or whether they or not they're going to be told it's illegal and put into jail if they tap these wells. At the hearing last week, um, there was no definite decision on this matter is left very vague, the possibility of being fined up to $500 a day or being put in jail was avoided with the condition that people did not dig their own well into the aquifer that was now used by the Cal Am, the California American Water Company here. But the problem is that they didn't decide what their boundaries are, how deep they go or how wide they go. So a person might accidentally tap into that and then be working illegally. So this evening at 7.30, for those of you that listen to Dialogue Conspiracy and want to just get in your car and go over to the hearing, at 7.30 tonight at the Tulacita School, that's out in Carmel Valley, the grammar school out there, Wayne and Pat Cook are going to have a meeting and try to get concerned citizens from the Monterey Peninsula to write their own terms of what they expect from this area from water, knowing that there is water underneath this valley to supply all of our needs for all of our lifetime. That's what they maintain, that this water flows into the ocean. There is a deep river that is totally untapped and being wasted. If you want to go to that meeting and help the local area write their own recommendations for the Board of Supervisors, that's tonight, 
June the 6th at 7.30 at Tula Cedar School. And I think it's important to get there before your shoe pinches, get involved in this project and show that you care, according to Wayne Cook, who has been able to locate wells for people all up and down the state and in the desert. He gives an example in Los Angeles when he first realized what was happening to the water supply when independent farmers had their own water wells and were using them and the water company uh, capped them off and made them use water being brought in from Colorado from out of the state. And then they became totally dependent upon the water company for uh, water coming in that was muddy and not as pure as the water that was right under their own property. And that was the first time that he became aware of what we call the water conspiracy in the state of California, what was happening. This was a few years ago. And so if you have property or anticipate ever that you want to build or branch out of this peninsula and dig your own water and have your water supply, don't feel comfortable now because the pipes are bringing it in to you. Um, go to the meeting at 7.30 tonight. It's Monday night, June 6th and let your voice be heard about how you feel about these problems. Also, I do have one problem of duplicating tapes. I make copies of the shows for other listeners who write to me, and uh, my other copying machine, my tape cassette, is broken. It's been broken for several weeks. I need another tape cassette. If anyone has one handy, I need it in a hurry. I'm about 48 tapes behind and mailing these away. And I will start duplicating them uh, commercially in Pacific Grove, have somebody copy them for me once I get caught up on this backlog. The cost of tapes of Dialogue Conspiracy, if you want to subscribe to them, is $4.13 for two shows. I used to have people send me their tapes, and then I would dub them off, but my machines were just working overtime and too busy. So I can arrange to have them copied, 60 cents a copy, at $3.19 for the Memorex tape, the envelope and postage, which comes to about $2 a week. You get the shows every two weeks, one 45-minute show on the back of another 45-minute show, and we'd mail them out uh, the second week of the month and then the last week of the month, and you would get these, and the cost is $4.13. If you want to send the money, uh, we can get them to you out faster if you want to do it that way. Well. I do want to talk about the visit with Sirhan, Sirhan this week. As I said, the headlines on this situation were programmed murder probed in the RFK case, Sirhan memory still clouded, new RFK murder theory, was Sirhan programmed after the fashion of Manchurian candidate to assassinate Senator Robert Kennedy nine years ago. Those were some of the headlines up here in the, uh, our area. The Los Angeles Times had a large story by Bill Farr in quotes, still can't recall slaying Sirhan Tells, Ward, and Hahn. Those are two members of the California Board of Supervisors in Los Angeles. The uh, two supervisors that went to see Sirhan Sirhan are Baxter Ward and Kenneth Hahn. And June the 2nd, 1977, they went with Godfrey Isaacs, Sirhan's attorney, to talk about the assassination of Robert Kennedy. Both of these stories and the other articles that I have did not come over the Associated Press or United Press. There were, were some small stories on the East Coast on this, but nothing on the major wire services that this story should be receiving. And special writers are writing the story for the newspapers, but it isn't getting much coverage. One of the big problems here in this kind of headline is there is the assumption that Sirhan Sirhan did the killing, uh, that he killed, he assassinated Robert Kennedy when he was programmed. Now that assumption uh, is false to begin with because if the investigation were to move properly, probably the last person to interview would be Sirhan Sirhan because he was heavily hypnotized and programmed. But the autopsy reports, the ballistic evidence, the witnesses inside the Ambassador Hotel, the um, direction of the bullets, and also the missing evidence that was totally destroyed, plus the massive perjury that took place in covering up this matter by the law enforcement people, would indicate that this was indeed a conspiracy and that it happened from the top level down, from the attorney general uh, in the state to the district attorney in Los Angeles, to the chief of police of Los Angeles, and the Los Angeles Police Department. 
and Syrian and Syrian is only one little take in this whole incident where he happened to be placed in the Ambassador Hotel where he shot randomly into various people in the Ambassador, but no bullet from Sirhan Sirhan's gun went into the body of Robert Kennedy. Now, the story that Sirhan might be the victim of what they're referring to as the Manchurian Candidate, which is a hypnosis uh, described in it was a book, a piece of fiction based on an incident during the Korean War, where a person was programmed to kill a political figure that where it got the title of the Manchurian Candidate. There's no um, evidence here uh, to, in the news story, to tell you how long this theory has been out among the various researchers and various people around the country who have been saying the case for a long time. The headline now is that it's new evidence because Saran can't remember, but the truth is that uh, this story has been out for a long time that he is unable to remember because he is hypnotized. There's a very fine psychologist living here on the Monterey Peninsula, Dr. Edward Simpson Kalas, who was at San Quentin at the time Sirhan arrived there. And he now lives as a, in the Monterey Peninsula, and we're close friends, and I know of his work with Sirhan Sirhan, and it was written up, I think, in National Tatler before that was pulled off the stand. There was a large article about this research at the time. At the time that Sirhan was at San Quentin, he was diagnosed by uh, Dr. Collins as being a very intelligent person. This isn't new. He has had articles and spoken with various persons from L.A. County and Sir Ham's attorney and all the people involved in the case and believed that he had a very high IQ, but he also uh, lived under some kind of hypnosis where he would not be able to recall those events. The, art, the attorney for Sir Ham, Sir Ham Godfrey Isaacs, it just stated last week that he was hypnotized before, but there was not sufficient rapport between him and the hypnotist. That isn't entirely true. The truth is that the hypnotist, or the person capable of doing it, Dr. Collins, was removed from the case. He had been able to work with Sirhan, and they got along with each other, and Sirhan liked him. They had things in common. One, uh, Dr. Collins is from Estonia. He's a refugee who's lived in this country many years, and Sirhan was from Palestine, so they had both fled their homes when they were taken over. One, the Israelis took over, and the other, the Russians. Uh, the other factor is that this wasn't the Jewish psychiatrist, so Sirhan trusted him. And it was about this time when the breakthrough was beginning to come through, this was a few years ago, that uh, this psychologist was taken off the case purposely and received a letter to the effect that he no longer could see Sirhan, Sirhan. And that's the time when the attorneys, of course, should have uh, kicked up a storm and worked along with the researchers to demand uh, to know why this is always being suppressed. I guess better late than never, but supervisors Ward and Han did, you know, Han did go up and see Sir Han, and now he's 33 years old. He has absolutely no memory of the murder of Robert Kennedy. He said he'd like to go back to the Ambassador Hotel to see if his memory could return. And he said he wants to know himself. Did he or did he not kill Bobby Kennedy? The interesting thing is that the Kennedy family and people around Robert Kennedy couldn't care less. There's a quotation in a recent article of Frank Mankiewicz, who was press secretary for Robert Kennedy, who actually stated, I don't know if it matters whether Syrian killed him or Mr. Whatchamacallit and didn't give that person a name, even though the suspect has been named also in a movie, The Second Gun, and in literature that's been printed all around the country. Robert Kennedy Jr. was taking an eye into politics. A photograph recently was in the news, wanting to get into politics, said that uh, he, it was good enough for him that Sirhan killed his father. Well, what if the killer is at large, uh, out spending a lot of money, living off the hog, knowing that he killed this man, being able to blackmail the government and maybe given a support system for the rest of his life out of CIA or tax money, not having to work in order to pay off this great deed he did. And what if Surya had been given the death penalty? He actually was on death row. And, of course, I don't approve of the death penalty. I, I never have. And besides just taking a life, the thing that I objected to is that the political patsies that have been programmed or hypnotized would 
be killed. And then we never could get our history straight. And of course, that is the purpose of dialogue conspiracy these last five and a half years, or my 14 years research, is try to make some sense out of our history, um, and making a lot of fuss out of roots, going back several generations to see where people came from. And I think there's good security in knowing your family and your ancestors as far back as you can. But there's also good psychological, social health in knowing what your government is doing, knowing what they're capable of doing. It, it projects a little idea of what they could do in the future if they're still lying and covering up. And they are lying and covering up. And I think it matters uh, whether or not uh, Sirhan Sirhan might have been put to death over this matter or any other person who's hypnotized. And the doctor that, who injects the sodium pentothal or the person who does the electrode implants or the hypnotist gets away with these things and does not get charged with murder. But the subject, who is the medium by which these political changes take place, is slain. So Sirhan is alive and he doesn't know himself. He's sitting in prison and uh, doesn't know yet whether he even killed anybody. And everybody takes this pretty calmly and I think it's fairly disgusting. And of course that gets to a point that I've made many times on Dialogue Conspiracy and in lectures at the college is that if I were asked about my 13 years research into the political assassinations or my conclusions, I would say that the biggest single problem in this country, is more than worrying about the economy or the ecology or employment or housing or energy or safety standards, is what is happening to our minds. Because if our leaders or the citizens don't have minds, they can't solve uh, sanely problems about energy or safety or get housing or food without chemicals or employment or any of the things we need to survive, uh, clean air or whatever it is. Without our minds, we can't have any of these things. The United States government has been the major importer and exporter of devious weapons, particularly exporting weapons. We have exported torture, torture systems all around the world. Uh, right now, we're sending IBM machines to keep fingerprint analysis of dissidents all over the entire world, Latin America, South America particularly. We've trained police to administer torture and uh, in the tactics of terror and so forth, and sent assassination teams all over the world that have not even begun to be investigated by Congress. Those slipshod investigations we got last year were just a tiny peak. But all of this becomes possible as we are losing our reason. People do not respond accordingly to what there is in the news, a little bit that comes out. And the worst of all is that we can be chemically controlled in our food or water. We can be psychologically controlled by what comes over uh, the TV. The U.S. government does manufacture mind-controlling agents. They do inject them surgically and hypnotically in water and food. Sirhan's loss of memory is only one case which is now making the headlines. And it's probably a first in in terms of hypnosis and political assassinations, making the headlines. But I promise you there are thousands of assassins doing small jobs of terror or violence, such as the killer in New York City now that's stalking these young girls with uh, long brown hair and massive pockets of violence, missing students, the University of Washington at USC, and uh, there's areas all around the country of people being killed. And we're not even sure that these killers know who they are or why they're going out or stalking or killing. Vacaville Medical Facility in California is a place where I received a letter from a prisoner who said he had to hold down patients against their wishes while double doses of a medication were giving, given in order to cause distinct changes in personality. The United States has financed psychosurgical experiments in Boston with Dr. Mark and Dr. Irvin and Dr. Sweet, who moved out to UCLA to the school of, to study the causes of violence and study the brains of various minority people to see at what level they would respond given certain situations. I have a quotation in the Realist article I published, it was in 1974, three years ago, that about explains the use of our minds for politics, and maybe we should read it one more time on the air. I read it about once a year, and I think it bears a hearing because 
of Sirhan's mind being completely erased on this important event. Dr. Jose Delgado, who was funded by NASA and Navy Intelligence and uh, very Health Education and Welfare, he works at Yale University, um, puts electrode implants into people's brains. This is done also at Vacaville and at Atascadero Hospital in California. Dr. Delgado was the man who began these procedures and has been funded for years. And as early as 1974 in the congressional record, this is what Dr. Delgado from Yale University said. We need a program of psychosurgery for the political control of our society. The purpose is physical control of the mind. Everyone who deviates from the given norm can be surgically mutilated. The individual may think that the most important reality is, own exist is his own existence, but this is only his personal point of view. This lacks historical perspective. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. This kind of liberal orientation has great appeal. We must electrically control the brain. Some days, someday there will be armies and generals who will be controlled by the electric stimulation of the brain. That's Dr. Jose Delgado, Congressional Record Number 26, Volume 118, February 19. 74. Well, at what time period would alleged assassins like Sirhan Sirhan fit in to the research that I have done based upon reports just published last year by the Army and the CIA and the FBI? How could Sirhan fit into this where he is used unwittingly? He was brought over here in 1957 to the conduit of the Greek Orthodox Church, his mother, his sister, and brothers were flown out to California. They were, got, they were given a home in Pasadena, a small home, but they lived in this home in Pasadena. And uh, the conduit of the Greek Orthodox Church is the same group that brought Marina Oswald, another agent of the CIA, to this country in 1962. The Sirhan family left Palestine in 1957, members of the Lutheran Church, became uh, comfortable with money and transportation, and were taken to Whittier, outside of Whittier, close to Whittier, California, to the headquarters of Richard Nixon. And uh, then shows on the other Nazi agents working in Richard Nixon's office. We won't get into that. 1957, the Sirhan family is brought here. But at what stage was the government working on mind control in that time period? According to the Department of Army report on the use of chemical agent research, um, this came out of the Army Office of the Inspector General. It was released in March 76, just this last year. Um, the, in 1950, the Army considered the use of LSD for interrogation purposes and also for the defense against enemy interrogation. In other words, they had many chemicals that they were using. It wasn't just plain LSD, but according to their report, there were about 26 different chemicals added to LSD and the purpose was for people such as Sirhan Sirhan, who are, in quotes, captive, uh, they're in the hands of military or enemy or police, to see if they can hold up and uh, lose their memory and be interrogated and not be able to come and provide answers to the circumstances under which they were caught. So by 1950, the LSD was considered by the Army for interrogation as a defense against the enemy. By May 1956, chemical warfare laboratories were set up at Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland where they started testing on human volunteers. And of course, their explanation in the Army document is that what they called volunteers never were volunteers. They said they were given beverages served that had sufficient LSD titled EA-1729. And then after they had one or two doses and survived that, they asked them if they wanted to be volunteers. By 1956 to 1957, this is the year the Sirhan family was being taken from Palestine by the Greek Orthodox Church, the Army Intelligence uh, Group at Fort Holabert combined with the Army Chemical Corps at Edgewood Arsenal, uh, the two groups, and they began their testing. And then they began using other chemicals, and in addition, they had LSD with electrode implants. That was then done in New Orleans at a hospital down there. They put the electrode implants that Delgado was perfecting and then used the LSD. 
serious, Mary Ann did have an accident at the racetrack. He used to work at uh, the racetrack in California, and that was an interesting part of his life, which he totally can't remember. And of course, there's a story that he fell off the horse and had a head injury and had received a few hundred dollars cash as a settlement for the head injury. So we don't know what doctor or what treatment he had at the time he had the head injury, and that also is uh, open to investigation of who saw Sirhan Sirhan on a medical basis. But it, by 1956 to 57, they were protect uh, they were perfecting these doses of what they called LSD. The normal was 160 micrograms. They were giving 1600 microgram doses. By March 1958, was the height of the testing. This is uh, 10 years before Robert Kennedy was killed and Syrian was used, one year after the family was in the clutches of the CIA. This was the height of testing where, according to the Army Inspectors General, they were working on memory impairment, motor reactions, and the effect of isolation or stress. And then the report went on to say by 1968, they were ready to be used for operational advantage. That means that 10 years before, Sirhan Sirhan is in the Ambassador Hotel uh, and uh, is to be shooting a gun wildly in the room and be told that he killed a man who was running for the office of President of the United States 10 years before that happened was the height of the testing and the work on memory impairment. So you can believe that by, from March 6, 58 to 68 that the Army Intelligence and Chemical Corps didn't sit back and stop saying, well, we have enough medication, because according to this report, they were continuing this up to, through 1971 at a cost of $26 million. By 1959, the LSD tests were, according to the Army, rewarding, and they recommended that they apply them now and utilize it in real situations on an experimental basis. That means that people could be tested to see if their memory worked, and they were set out in the Army field instructors for the G2 were given orders to administer the LSD, and they were told by 1960, and this is three years before John Kennedy was killed, that they should coordinate now their work with the FBI and the CIA. By 1960, December, the CIA plus Army Intelligence and the U.S. Chemical Corps were working together with uh, giving drugs and also testing uh, the ability to hold up against interrogation and memory impairment. By 1961, they were overseas using this uh, quite a great deal, according to the Army reports, and they were causing mental diseases and, that were not recognized by physicians in order to get diagnosis that could be discredited against the person. In 61, LSD was being put into operational use. By 1962, they had an Operation Derby hat with a base over in Hawaii for further testing, and by 1963, uh, LSD testing had continued. The records were not kept, the volunteers in quotes were not listed, and they threw away many of the records as soon as it became evident that uh, the committees in Washington were going to go into this further. Now that was the Army testing chronologically, and simultaneously, uh, Sirhan Sirhan, who could be victimized because he was part the condos of the Greek Orthodox Church and considering the way they were brought over here, there was no record of them at the Jordanian Embassy at the time of Sirhan's arrest, which caused me to believe that he was part of the Reinhardt Galen operation of Nazis that were brought from Eastern Europe and Middle East into the United States and all over the world, and this family was plunked into Pasadena, California. The CIA was testing at the same time the Army was testing. Uh, they began in 1947, the Army began in 1950, and the purpose in 1947 was for the CIA to begin altering human behavior. If you want the evidence on this or the testimony on this, write to the uh, government publishing office in Washington, D.C., the government printing office, and ask for book one of the Senate Committee to Study Governmental Operations, published April 26th. 1976. I'm reading directly some quotations from that book. Uh, the title is Foreign and Military Intelligence. And the section I'm choosing to read is on the CIA testing of drugs and chemicals for altering human behavior with a wide variety of methods. That's their title. 
So in 47, when the Nazis were brought into this country from Germany in Project Paperclip to various hospitals, institutions, and in the aerospace, the CIA began the project of altering human behavior, according to this report. By 1947 to 1953, they had a specific testing program called Operation Chatter. Now that was for the purpose of interrogation. So the chemical warfare laboratory at Edgewood Arsenal and Fort Holabird uh, were combined for seeing if people could have a memory erased and uh, under interrogation uh, not be able to recall events. But the CIA simultaneously had their little operations going and one was called Operation Chatter for specific purposes of uh, interrogation. And this could explain why Sirhan can remember uh, nothing that happened at all. These experiments went on from 1947 to 1953. Then from 1953 to 1957, the CIA had a notorious Operation Bluebird Artichoke. Now, artichokes are grown up here in Watsonville, California, and are a vegetable known uh, to be associated with California. And so many uh, murders took place up and down the state where memories were erased. And it's interesting that uh, they gave it this title, Artichoke, because I think it uh, it applies specifically to this area. These had to do with sodium pentothal injections, such as Candy Jones got, where she was hypnotized and given another name and tortured and couldn't recall who she was. And the purpose of uh, Operation Bluebird Artichoke with sodium pentothal was to erase the memory, to create double or triple personalities, to resist even torture if you have to, to conduct covert operations without memory later. So given the history of the Sirhan family and their backgrounds, which I've gone into a few times and can do next week if I run out of time this week, I want to make the point, and I hope I'm making it clear, that the CIA and the FBI, who were in touch both with the Sirhan family and in the cover-up and investigation and the Army, had every means possible to control this young man's mind. That's why it's so important to go to the ballistic and the weapon evidence and the physical evidence in the Ambassador Hotel and in the police department because Sir Han's mind just can't control uh, or remember what he saw. And when you see the methods they had for handling that far in advance, you can understand why he has no memory. Incidentally, the Manchurian candidate title, of course, is a scare uh, like the yellow peril or the reds or the commies. It's something that's been used over and over again. Uh, we could call it the American candidate because what I'm telling you here are these figures uh, that I'm citing to you come from congressional investigations from the Army themselves, and they were not thought of overseas. They are homegrown types of memory erasing. Uh, in 1967 to 1970, the CIA had their operation MK Naomi, and they had stockpiles of incapacitating lethal material, toxin, shellfish, poison darts, or pills, and uh, methods of silencing people and animals. And then, of course, the MK Ultra was the chemical biological agents that were tested from 1953 to 63. Robert Kennedy was killed in 1968, but by 1963, the MK Ultra was using radiation, electroshock, psychology, psychiatry. This is in the uh, CIA report that came out of Washington, as I say, in 1976. They, in order to control people, these are the very techniques they use. Radiation, electroshock, psychologists, uh, for just pure hypnosis, psychiatry, 10 years of tests that were then operational that they begin to apply in LSD. And uh, they test all levels of society from back to build prisoners to army hospitals to the National Institute of Mental Health before they could get to a human being such as Sirhan. Sirhan is a student at a uh, junior college in Pasadena, they have perfected this pretty well. By 1961 to 1971, which is the time period that John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King were killed, MK Ultra became MK Delta. And then the CIA report says that the testing was over and it became operational. And that's when Alan Dulles, the head of the CIA, who then became a member of the Warren Commission, ordered 100 million LSD for uh, several oh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it was ordered for universities, pharmaceutical houses and hospitals, state and federal institutions. 
and then MK Ultra uh, began to combine with the Army and their project, Derby Hat, or Project Third Chance, and their purpose, stated purpose, according to the Senate hearing, was to control bodies, willing or not, where drugs could be used and uh, they could disable, kill, harass, or erase the memory. Let's so say you can get this from the government printing office, book one on foreign and military intelligence, published April 26, 1976. By December 63, when John Kennedy was killed, MK Ultra and MK Delta were operational. They were used as an operational weapon. According to the CIA report, the President and the Congress never knew about these and they were used for many purposes. They stated one was to discredit people, one was to implant suggestions, and this is where the Sirhan case comes in. One use was for mental control, another was to elicit information, and of course, uh, one was to cut off information, and they could produce, according to them, a psychosis in a chronic form, particularly latent and schizophrenia, they could make permanently insane. Now, while the FBI, while the CIA and the F and the Army were doing these things in that chronological order, the FBI also was working simultaneously along with them. There were three layers of operation working to uh, change personality, to erase memory, to control assassins uh, before or after, and uh, this is how you expect the politics of this country is much more effective than going to uh, vote and having a choice of whether you wanted Richard Nixon or Robert Kennedy, this is a much more effective way to control the country. So if you go to book two of the Intelligence Activities and Rights of the Americans, this was published also April 26, 1976, and is a second part of that first book on foreign and military intelligence, also available from the government printing office. Uh, you get the chronology that from 1964 to 1970, and those were the years immediately after the killing of John Kennedy and included uh, by then Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, and Malcolm X had been murdered. The FBI then joined with the CIA and the National Security Agency in illegal and domestic activities. By May 1964, it was a year, half a year after Kennedy, John Kennedy was killed, their counterintelligence program uh, began and I just spoke to Ted Gandolfo, a researcher in New York today, and he was telling me that Harold Weisberg just got out of the National Archives uh, or from the CIA Freedom of Information Act, 150 pages, I think he said more than that, but I don't want to exaggerate, I think it ran into almost a thousand pages that he's going to send me on these intelligence activities, and a large section is what they were doing to the researchers who investigated the assassinations of John Kennedy and then Robert Kennedy, the techniques used by the CIA and FBI to discredit the researchers. And all of this began when John Kennedy was killed. And the memory erasing and the chemical uh, hampering is all part of the operation. The notorious COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program, began in May 1964, six months after John Kennedy was killed. And in July 68, it became necessary for the FBI to break into every organization or group who was not only uh, protesting the war in Vietnam, but who was uh, researching the murder of John Kennedy, questioning the murder of Robert Kennedy, questioning the murder of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. And the methods suggested by the superiors that are written in the uh, book two of the Senate Committee Investigations are the following. I've, admired, I've read them to you before, but I think some of the techniques should be repeated. The orders of the FBI, as uh, stated by themselves, this isn't what I made up, are one, gather information on their immorality, the, uh, show them as scurrilous and deprived, call attention to their habits and living conditions, explore every possible embarrassment, investigate personal conflicts or animosities between people, send articles to newspapers showing their depravity, use narcotics or free track sex to entrap them, have members uh, arrested on marijuana charges, exploit hostilities between various persons. This is the way the researchers have been divided. But also this has to do with people wanting to find out what happened to Sirhan, Sirhan or Robert Kennedy. This is the kind of treatment we've all received. 
exploit the hostilities between them, use cartoons and photographs to ridicule them, use misinformation to confuse and disrupt, get records of their bank accounts, obtain specimens of their handwriting, provoke the groups into rivalries that could even deal in their deaths. So you see that while the uh, FBI and the CIA and the Army were working chemically to control their particular passes and agents, uh, the government was also working to control those people that were questioning the hard evidence in this case. And it is the hard evidence of the case that is important. That is why it's so tragic to go to Sirhan Sirhan at this case, because in this case right at this time, because the patsies such as Sirhan or Arthur Bremer, who's charged with sh uh, shooting at George Walls, or James Earl Ray, who was charged with killing Martin Luther King, can't be uh, knowing much about the intricacies, about these conspiracies. The CIA or other intelligence apparatus, such as ITT organization or IBM, don't tell their uh, alleged uh, assassins or their passes the script. They work on a need-to-know basis. There isn't much that James Earl Ray knows. He can't tell the House investigation in Washington, that committee, uh, what he knows. He only knows a man named Raoul he met who gave him money, thousands of dollars, provided passports, provided aliases and doubles. How much can he know uh, from a simple basis from the time he was allowed to escape from the Missouri Penitentiary? Uh, he, there isn't very much information he can provide, but there are ways of getting the information. And uh, next week, uh, because we run out of time, I always have more material than I can do in 45 minutes. I'll go into some of the things that should be going on in Los Angeles to break the story of the Robert Kennedy assassination. And I feel very sorry that uh, Sir Hans will be put under pressure because there's other techniques. But it's understandable why his memory is gone. And next week on Dialogue Conspiracy, we'll go into some of those. This is Bay Russell, Carmel, California. I'll see you next week on Dialogue Conspiracy. There is a truth.